friends in this video we are going to see management of an intermittent cataract with very hard nucleus this is the main incision with a 2.8 millimeter steel keratome at mid limbus you can see a little blood oozing out this is good because when we include some capillaries in the incision healing is faster healing is better an air bubble is injected underneath this air bubble tripan blue dye is applied on all parts of the anterior capsule and now this is a bit of adrenaline and now the dye is washed out and now the antechamber is filled up with viscoelastic substance and this is 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose and now is the time to do capsulorexis in this case I am using a cystitome to raise a capsular tag uh, here goes the cystitome this has been made from a 26 case disposable needle you can see some amount of lens matter coming out so there is some amount of intumescence in this case and it is dangerous to do a large rexis when the intralenticular pressure is on the higher side so a small rexis is made and some lens matter is aspirated as this is done we can see a brown hard nucleus nuclear sclerosis is grade 5 or even more or even harder so I remove some cortical lens matter inject visco again take Vana scissor and make a nick at the margin of the minirexis. Use the uterta again and enlarge the minirexis to get an adequate size rexis. In hard cataracts, we must not do a rexis smaller than 5.5 millimeter in diameter. So, this size of this rexis is about 5.75 millimeter and this is adequate if we do a small rexis in hard cataracts we cause lot of genular stress and management of the fragments large hard fragments becomes difficult if we do a small rexis so always do a rexis which is larger than 5.5 millimeter and even 6 millimeter in hard cataracts and now this is submarine chaff for management of hard cataracts the tip goes through the substance of the nucleus and we use the chopper to crack the nucleus 180 degree rotation and the nucleus is divided into two heminuclei in this case the cataract is so hard that and there is an endonucleus very hard endonucleus this is emulsified and removed and now we can have rest of the nucleus it is being chopped into fragments whenever I get a free fragment I am going to remove that fragment all the fragments are joined to each other at the center and this is a free fragment so I use ultrasonic energy and emulsify this piece ultrasonic energy used in this case is 85 percent flow rate is 45 ml per minute and vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury so emulsification of the pieces are in progress we have 
emulsified this is the last piece of on heminucleus whenever the piece whenever the fragment is large we subdivide it with in, into smaller pieces and emulsify the piece you can see that no free fragment is going upward and hitting the corneal endothelium this is the way to protect the corneal endothelium in this case the antechamber is very stable the poster capsule is far behind and I'm sure that the genule is quite healthy in this case though the patient is very old the patient age of the patient is about 78 years now this is the last portion of the last piece at this time the parameters are reduced for safe emulsification of these last small piece and now is the time to remove the cortex some amount of visco is injected into the antechamber this maintains the antechamber and protects the corneal endothelium I'm using the 23 gauze Simco for removal of this cortex the cortex from 1 o'clock to 8 o'clock is removed easily and I find that the side port is very small so I'm going to make a small another port at 6 o'clock introduce the Simco through this and remove the cortex from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock this is a very nice way to remove the sub incisional cortex you make a side port at 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock through the sclera just behind the limbus so that this wound doesn't require any hydration and now in this case I'm filling up the capsular bag as well as the antechamber with visco 2% SPMC and then I enlarge the main wound by 0 0.2 millimeter so the main wound which was 2.8 has become about 3 millimeter now now I use a B cartridge and implant a monofocal single piece acrylic intraocular lens in the capsular bag the lens has gone into the capsular bag this is a Sinsky hook the lens is dialed to place the haptics little away from the main incision so that I can go behind the eye wheel and remove the visco from the capsular bag here goes the 23 gauze Simco removing visco from antechamber now I go behind the eye wheel and remove the visco from the capsular bag as I did this one haptic came out so this may happen whenever we try to remove the visco from the capsular bag one haptic or both haptics may come out of the capsular bag and the lens may be in the antechamber or in the sulcus since so this case is we have to use irrigating cannula or simco again and place the haptic that has come out of the bag to place it in the capsular bag and it has been done going through the side port which was made at 6 o'clock 
this is a bit of moxifloxacin and now is the time to close the wound side port corneal stroma on either side of the side port is hydrated so that this stab incision gets closed I'm using an irrigating cannula to remove the air bubbles and as I do this I find some cortex at 6 o'clock some cells are sticking to the posterior capsule near 6 o'clock but I don't want to remove that because the haptic ones came out I don't want to prolapse the haptic of the IOL again I remove the cortex and leave the cells which is near 6 o'clock on the sticking to the posterior capsule I just leave it like that and now the antechamber is formed nicely and the case is concluded thank you very much for your attention hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love respect empathy and great surgical competence